happens. So this right here was on a steam condensate line, right? You can see that corrosion, look at that. And it's gonna be hard to tell with this camera, but there is a pinhole, very tiny, tiny pinhole, right where my finger is, and that's where it leaked. But at the end of the day, if you can see on the inside, and actually, hold on one second, let me shine some light on this so you can actually see the corrosion. Look at the corrosion in that pipe. Look at the pitting, all right? So I got some get some light in here, all right? Let me see if I can get some better lighting. Yeah, look at that pinhole right in the pipe itself. There's a lot of corrosion, you know, and it's eaten away. Look at that. It's eaten away at that Schedule 80 pipe that's on here. So it's going to eat that away, and eventually even the Schedule 80 pipe is going to get a pinhole leak, and you're going to have to make a repair. But because it's a Schedule 40 fitting, the very first tiny pinhole that happened was right there. And that was after being on a system, on a steam condensate system that was not balanced, not probably serviced well, just after roughly two, two and a half years. And that's why it's so important to make sure you're using the right alloy for the system that you're putting it on. So you wanna pay attention to that again. Yeah, would it be fine? It work fine if you know you made sure that the pH levels were fine. You made sure that it was pitched correctly, so there's no bellying. Yes, of course it would. But because we can't guarantee that somebody's going to do that, we just you know uh, err on the side of caution and say, you know what, don't use it on the steam condensate side. The industry actually recommends that you use stainless steel. So whether you're welding or threading, anyhow, they say stainless steel, but stainless steel is more expensive. So that's why everybody just goes ahead and specifies Schedule 80 steel pipe because it's more cost effective and because it's a thicker wall than 40, it gets you that life expectancy, but it still breaks down, still corrodes, still gets pinhole leak, and you've got to go in there and make those repairs. Now, Megapress would be a fast repair, but again, just not an approved application. But let me show you how you would make that transition though with steam condensate. So if I have a steam trap, like this one right here, if I have my steam trap, I'm going to come in with my carbon steel Megapress and when I leave and I have my steam condensate on the bottom side here, this is actually mega press stainless steel with FKM. So it's white dot. So just like the white dark carbon steel, white dot here, you can get these green dot as well. So we have them in uh, 316 and 304 grade. You can actually make that transition easily and you're using the same tooling platform, same jaws for mega press carbon steel as you would stainless. And you're able to make that transition from carbon steel to stainless on your steam condensate and get the life and the longevity and the warranty and everything out of that system. You won't have any issues with that corrosion and failure because you are using a uh, three, or stainless steel material, whether that's 304 or 316. Uh, then on this side, I just have a, a bronze. This is for service. So same thing as that service valve. You know, this is how you can test out your steam traps. So I can have a bronze adapter on here and I can go ahead and put a ball valve here to test out to make sure the steam trap is working. Uh, some individuals will specify putting vents on these as well. So just follow the layout and design depending on the manufacturer. We don't manufacture steam traps, but just the fittings that would attach to all these accessories and bells and whistles.